been with us wow. to enjoy the feast so great. and the celebration. So great. So Father, I just uh, we want to start out by uh, blowing the shofar and announcing our presence. Heavenly Father, we just come to you today and thank you. Thank you for the day. Thank you for the people. And thank you for the ability that we can come and worship you. Thank you, Father, that we can come together from all places, from all races, from all cultures, to come together to celebrate you, our one God. Father, there is no other. There is no need for another. Oh, 
this nation right now.
let's intercede and plow the ground right now.
us right now to pray for all the millennials. Let's go 18 to 34, that their eyes would be open to holiness and to the, let's pray for the millennial generation. We begin to come before you right now, God. Refiner's fire, the fuller soap, holiness. Holiness will change a nation suddenly, suddenly, holiness. Holiness unto the Lord.
loving kindness is spell check. You're wrong. <laughs> it's a it's an old English term that I said it's in Noah Webster's dictionary, 1828, bro. <laughs> the loving kindness is it's plural. How many are glad that the loving kindnesses of the Lord are new every morning? It didn't say the loving kindnesses are new every other morning. Because then if you mess up on the wrong day, you're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Think about what I'm, the steadfast love of the Lord indeed never ceases. Go back to D-Mat. The
want to have him share this prophetic word about calling those from the back seats forward. Um, do we have a handheld mic up here? What, what mic should I use? I want you to just take a minute and share that word. You, It's right there. Because we're going to pray over all of those that are sitting in the back row that their gifts need to be activated. There's been so many people um, they're, they're maybe not the cutest not the most well received but that was wrong. Every gift will be used at a high level. Somebody say yes Lord. And when you started speaking this word to me bro just go and take a few minutes to share this prophetic word which you sensed in the Lord. So in the inner realm of of talking to this man of God, the Lord was speaking to me about this next generation of people, the remnant of believers. Oh, thank God. And the Lord said that they are coming from the rear yeah. and they're coming up to the front. That's right. That's right. There's been many a people that have been in the position of wanting to do, but because of what they've been told that they're not. They remain in a place of complacency, in a place of fear, of being afraid to come to the front. Yeah, and the Lord is calling them by name, literally. Oh. And he's telling them to come forth and declare and speak the word of the Lord. Woo. And it's coming with fire, and it's coming with anointing, and it's coming with power, and it's coming with authority. The Lord says, think it not strange what is one of your children. Think it not strange what is one of your children? Oh my God. I don't know who I'm talking to. Thinking when you're not, yeah. thinking not strange if it's one of your children. And he said, I'm pouring out my spirit upon all flesh. My sons and daughters, they shall prophesy. This is what's happening in this next generation of believers. And there's still the yet remnant of people that yet believe. Not the only that God can, but that God will. This is a season that the Lord says, I'm raising up the standard. I'm raising the standard up higher. What we've been taught as young people was Jesus is coming back. And I still yet believe he's coming back for his bride. Does anybody believe that in here? Hallelujah. So God is calling for the people to come forth to be used by him. Can we just lift our hands to heaven? Can we, can we stand if we can? Just worship the Lord. This is what I want y'all to do for a few minutes. Just open your mouths and let's talk to God. God, we bless you. Come on, y'all. God, we exalt you. Come on, people of God. Let's press in. Let's press in. Let's press in. Let's press in. Yes, Jesus, we honor you, we bless you, we thank you for your glory, for your power, for your authority. Yeah, that's moving now. Hallelujah. Yeah, let there be a sweet sound in this place. Yeah, we have no choice but to say yes to you. We have no choice but to submit to your will. We have no choice but to submit to your way. God, whatever it costs, whatever it costs, that's what we shall do. Whatever it costs, we'll do whatever it takes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Can we clap our hands right there and give God praise?
thousands, if not millions. They've even been faithful to come to their church and they were overlooked. We call forth those that were in the midst of the scripture. This is the scripture. The scripture is, just go ahead and sit at the back and then they'll call you. Lord, you're calling this remnant army to the front. We ask you to raise them up. Come alive. Ezekiel 37, come alive. A remnant army. Bones are scattered all over the valley floor. I said bones are scattered all over the valley floor. Come forth, remnant army. Let's begin to intercede. 
in right now. Proclaim and decree. This is our position as the royal priesthood in this earth right now. We're declaring that dry bones in Missouri, in Illinois, in Kansas, in Iowa, touch this heartland with your glory. Nebraska, God, Arkansas, Oklahoma, touch this heartland with your glory. Glory fire, touch this heartland. Come to life. a song right out of Ezekiel 37. When I heard it, I said, please, Lord, Bethel, Jesus, color, culture, elevation, let them start writing out of the word of God again. Somebody say yes to that. I don't care how old you are, how long you've been, start writing out of the word of God. Kirk Bennett is a huge prayer guy out of Kansas City. He says, Kent, just re-prophesy the word. I said, what? What? He said, Kent, just well, he said, you're already doing it. At 29 years of age, after I've been in ministry for nine years, winds of the spirit, uh, waves of worship, uh, marked by the Lord when I was 20 years old, I was spirit-filled Easter night of 1974. Dinosaurs were roaming the earth. Not really, does seem like it's that long ago. But I got in a youth group at New Covenant Fellowship with my good friend Ron Tucker, who now pastors Grace Church. We had 1,500 kids from 75 kids to 1,500 in two and a half years every Saturday night. It's all coming again. It was winds of the Holy Spirit and waves of water. This is not over yet. Say it with me. This is not over yet. This is not over yet. That was a prophetic word. The Lord always gives me a prophetic word in season over each year, like in December. Like before Christmas, he goes, can you tell my people? Some have lost hope, which is the anchor of their soul, by the way. They got to get hope back again in, in me. But he said, you tell them it's not over yet. We've got a ton of millennials. We got a bunch of boomers, the boomer generation, which I'm in. Uh, my dad was a World War II veteran. I do appreciate it. He's buried not far from here. He's from Whiteside, Missouri. EOE, Missouri. My mom lived in Painesville. That's where her father, farmer, dead cattle. This, 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 I'm going back to my roots. I'm coming up here. I was telling Kathy, I love this place because I, I have ownership and authority. I have led worship. My dad took me hunting all over Missouri, but now I've gone all over Missouri leading worship. It's been beautiful. But being marked at a young age, well, the release of the Holy Spirit 
is going to come now at a high level. It's going to blow people's mind. It'll blow right past dead churches. If you're unwilling to change, you'll be out. You're not out of your salvation. I'm telling you, this is over. You're looking at a man that's been around the mountain. I've been in ministry since June of 74, so it's been a long time. My wife and I have been married 45 years. We can't even believe that. We're just 39. Not sure how that happened. Well, the gray hair proves that I'm older than that. <laughs> so I'm going to teach you this song that Lauren Daigle wrote, Come Alive. Come Alive. And the church will start praying. When I was 29, I stepped outside in the parking lot of Victory Fellowship in Crestwood, Missouri, South County, Sunset Hill. I said, Lord, you I was leaving the pastorate I had for 15 months, giving it to Harry Schrader, a good friend of mine. I said, are you changing my calling? He said, absolutely not. You're my prophetic errand boy. <laughs> Look at me. What a high honor. If I say that on Sunday, Sunday morning, people laugh. I don't know why they laugh. I go, no, I'm a prophetic errand boy. He said, go where I tell you to go. Yes, Lord. Say what I tell you to say. Yes, Lord. And do what I tell you to do. And that's what I've done for all my time in ministry. But secondarily, Jesus spoke to me personally give you exact words, Ken. I want you to teach my body how to intermingle praise into prayer and worship into intercession. So you can go online. We didn't bring all the product today. You can buy the book. It's called Streaming in Heaven Slow. You can go to KenHenry.com or from CarrieChouse.org, either way. What's on the little sheets that we handed out? Here's the bottom line. I can go teach all weekend, Friday, Saturday, and then on Sunday I have to start over. Because half the church that the pastor paid my airfare to be there, I'm a veteran believer, I actually know what I'm doing. And maybe up to half the church or a third of it comes out. But I, I see him, I go, you guys are outer court believers or you're barely in the court. And yet they want to vote on everything. I go, this is over, the Lord's gonna blow right past this because we're going back to the book of Acts Listen, praying every day, listening to the apostles' teaching. I, I'm telling you, before I get out of here, I'm 67. I was born in 1953. And before I get out of here, you gave me a promise, Lord. My dad was singing until he was 87, so I got 20 years to go. <laughs> I'll be older and uglier. I'll just get behind a veil, a scrim. <laughs> they go, we know the voice. Who is that? <laughs> Who is that masked man? <laughs> it's going to be good. So this song, when I heard it, I said, thank you. I think Lauren's like 30 or 31 now. She wrote it for three or four years ago. She's 27, right out of Ezekiel. And she said, through the eyes of men, there seems there's so much we have lost as we look down the road where all the prodigals have walked. And one by one, the enemy has whispered lies and led them off as slaves. No more, Lord. But we know that you are God. Yours is the victory. We know that there is more to come that we might not yet see. So with the faith you've given us, we step into this valley, unafraid, the valley of dry bones. Oh, here's the chorus. We call out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. We call out to dead hearts, come alive.
sons and by your spirit breathe upon them show Right now, breathe, oh breath of God. 
sister she said you know the Lord knows when I'm gonna pass away and he's got it all written in a book so no fear in the meantime how about that I'm, I'm all about it I, I'm not a I was raised by a John Wayner up the street here my dad was 6'3 225 I had an uncle Marshall an uncle Lindo and uncle champ that should tell you that's how I was raised <laughs> we're deer hunters and turkey hunters you won't find all of us <laughs> Here's the bottom line. When I saw that kind of fear, I went, what can, the, the Hebrew says, well, I will shake and whatever can be shaken, it's not going to stand. But we're not going to be shaken, right, guys? Because we're founded in Christ Jesus. Just in case nobody announced it, we're founded in the Lord. So this bridge. And I will.
share a vision I had last night at a prayer meeting. It's a good friend of ours, Justin Sparks, says we just need to get together and pray for our nation. And it was actually outside, kind of around a fire pit. We started it up. A good friend of mine was leading worship on a keyboard. And uh, I started having a vision. And the Lord said, I'm going to take away the veils, Ken. All the veils, all the stuff that's been done in secrecy during the election, I'm going to take. I want you to tell people to pray by the power of the wind of the Spirit. I'm going to blow away the veils of all secrecy. Number two, one, two, three steps. He said, you're going to pray that I would shine my light. Angels are coming with flashlights. I said, wow, angels could have flashlights? That's cool. I don't know why they need those, but... It was very powerful. So the number two was he said, I'm going to shine the light on all corruption and fraud. I will shine my light. I'll expose. And number three was you pray that I'll expose every ounce of it. So I went, oh, my God. So I'm, I'm releasing it today. I might, you know, hang on to this vision and run with it for the next month before Christmas saying, things done in secret will be shouted from the rooftops it's been long enough I asked my wife I said hon honestly how long has this stuff been she said 50 years she said it's straight up and it's, it's corruption on many levels it happens to be a four year presidential election but he said I'm going to begin to expose all the corruption and bribery and what people are getting paid for to do it so for a few minutes today, we're just going to pause. It was on my heart as soon as I touched the keyboard at like quarter after 12. We're going to actually, I'm going to say them again, get them in your spirit, and then we're going to start praying. We're going to pray one, two, three, go, Lord, one, two, three. The first is I'm taken away. I saw like three horizons full of veils, and they were all like interlayered. They were all like, uh, it, was, it was unbelievable. Man, I've never seen that many veils. And by the way, by the way, the veil was rent in two at the death of our Messiah, and people started walking all over Jerusalem. I don't know why pastors don't teach that, but that's pretty cool. Beyond Raiders of the Lost Ark is people walking all over Jerusalem. That was a good point right there. So all the veils will be blown away by the wind of the Spirit. He said, I'm bringing my light. Angels with flashlights, all forms of light are going to come and, and uh, begin to, I'm going to pu put light on it. And then number three was pray that I will expose. It's going to be exposed and brought up to the daylight. Somebody later on, about 15 minutes later, started praying that the, the people that have done this would fall under conviction. And they would come out on their own and say, here's what we did. And this is what I got paid for it. I, 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 listen, if the body of Christ will pray in unity, remember my calling is to lead deep worship. I got that. I've been doing it since I'm 20 years old. But he said, kids, you got to teach my body how to jump right out of praise into deep prayer, jump right out of worship, and go ahead and do intercession for 17 minutes. There's no prayer on Sunday morning anywhere I go. I'm, I'm, look at me. I actually... You know, I've been doing it for a long time. I said, How, there, oh, somebody prays over the offering for 20 seconds, and they might uh, offer prayer at the end of the service of 60 or 75 minutes. This can't be right. It's not right. The American church needs to have a breakthrough and understand you are called to be in the royal priesthood, dude. You're in the royal priesthood, dude. Get in the royal, you're in the royal priesthood. He called you out of darkness into his marvelous light to become prayer warriors. Every American believer, every African believer, every Argentinian believer, underground church, under underground church in, in China's praying. They have to. They can't make it without it. So we're coming into praise with prayer, worship, the intercession. Somebody say yes, Lord. bow your heads for the Lord. Let's get it right now. I'm going to say the three things. The veils. Pray that I blow away the veils by the power of my Holy Spirit. 
Well, let's pray that one, number one. Get going on that. Father, we're asking you in Jesus' name as a unified body of believers, a body of Christ, we're praying all this will be exposed, God. The wind of your spirit is coming and blowing the veils away. They're blowing them down. The veils are falling on the ground. The veils are being blown away by the power of your Holy Spirit. We stay right there on it, Father. Blow away by the vision and the prophetic vision and the prophetic word. Blow away the veils. I want every veil on the ground, every veil of secrecy all over this nation, every state, every county, every city, not just Philadelphia, Lord, not just Atlanta. I'm telling you, Lord, you're, you're going to blow away the veils. And any fraud and corruption will be brought into the light of day. So shine your light. Shine your light. Expose what's really happened, Lord. Your truth is coming forth. You blow away the veils. You bring the light of heaven. Bring the light of heaven, Lord. Yeah. Oh, you blow away the veils. Blow away the veils. You blow away. You're taking down every veil of secrecy. You're shining your light. I saw angels with flashlights.
Everybody shout hallelujah. Woo. All right, I want you to be seated. I'm going to talk to you just for a minute before I close out. Wow. Wow. Uh, 
just because we can. The other thing that goes without saying, we just went, we started a little bit later, an hour and 50 minutes. We had a prayer room at Destiny Church in St. Louis for over 10 years, and every Tuesday morning from 10.30 to 12, I had a group of teenagers and tweeners, 10 to 12-year-olds, that ran a 90-minute prayer room set. I'll let, I'll let it sink in for a minute. This is what we should be doing at Children's Church. Not every Sunday, but don't, don't baby our children around. Teach them how to worship, for God's sake, for God's sake. So we were down at a major pastor's conference. I was helping a church, a large church in Baton Rouge that had a school called, uh, it was I-220. I and uh, we're on the way back through the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport from Baton Rouge. And my son-in-law, Jim Stern, looks at me, he goes, hey, Ken. I said, yeah, what? We're going to catch another flight back to St. Louis from Dallas. And he goes, you know about the seeker sensitive movement? I said, no, I don't want to know. But I do know about it, but I don't want to. He goes, you know how long, how much time they they uh, delegate for, for music? They don't even call it worship. 17 minutes, I said, that's totally wrong. Your wife goes to dinner. You go, we got 17 minutes. That's Oh, you've been gone all day. Could you tell me about your, I got 17 minutes. You don't do that. Then most charismatic churches have dialed it back to 30 minutes. So what I'm saying, it takes time for intimacy. Thanks for sharing, Ken. You, you can't fool us, bro. I've, I've been around too long. So the bottom line is that something, what I believe is coming, again, of churches, the Lord doesn't need your church. He's the living God. So you could be a 1,000, you could be 50, you could be three. I don't care what you are, but you better start worshiping. By the way, if something harder than COVID comes, and I'd have no idea what that would be, I'm just saying you, you better understand your place in the refuge under the shadow of his wings. And we can fight. We can fight anything because he conquered death, the death, burial, and resurrection. He wants you to pick up your card. We normally have a CD table and a book table and all this stuff. He said, "Hun, don't do it. I want her to relax today. Uh, that's my wife, Carla. Behind the screen, she's behind the scrim. Carla, everybody wants to say hello, Carla. And that is Renee. Renee, Wonder Woman, a junior Joyce Meyer coming forth. I just want to be on record that I said that. I know, I heard you say. These are, I've been doing this so long. My wife told me, four Christmases ago. She goes, Kent, you know how many record albums you've done? I said, no. Now, I've been playing guitar since I'm 11. Had my first band at 13. I got saved when I was 19 and spirit when I was 20, and I've never looked back. But she goes, you've done six, 60 record albums. I said, don't lie about it. Don't exaggerate. And by the way, she's a bookkeeper by trade, so I got called out. I got smacked, smacked right there. She goes, look at this. Either you produced or you've led worship. That is one of my highest honors on the earth. I did it for Jesus. See, the reason that I'm different than other worship leaders, I've been asked 10,000 or 50,000 times, why are you different? I said, because Jesus saved my life and I lead worship for him, not for people. Stop leading worship for people. It's, it's, it's inverted. It's upside down. It's not right. We should lead because we love him and we know that heaven engages us in that. So on the front, you'll see my youngest daughter, Ariel, me and Matt is right here. That's my wife, Carla. And we started Carriage House Ministries. Ken Henry Ministries has been going 43 years or 44 years. So Carriage House is now the extension. So we're making a plan when Carl and I are gone. Uh, legacy will continue on. Carriage House, well, here, here's what happened because people need faith reports. When we started online March 19th, two days after the shutdown of our nation, all that, um, our budget for April, May, June, and July, and including March, all came in online. I See, I travel usually three weekends a month. I have one weekend off, so I do 36 worship weekends a year. I've done that for over 30, 35, 37 years now. But I said, you know what, Matt, I'm done. I don't want to, unless I'm related to someone like Kathy and Ross, I, I'm not going to, I don't cold call churches. I, I haven't done that ever since Integrity anyway. I never did it. I, I don't have, I don't want to go someplace. I want to have an encounter with the Lord. And if they're not up for that, people still call me and go, Ken, we love you. So, okay, hold up. Now. We, you love my anointing that I carry in the Lord. 
But when I come to your church, I'm going to mess with your worship team. I'm going I'm to call them out because they have to go higher in the presence. And they said, well, we don't want you. Half of them said, we don't want you to come. I said, oh, I'm going to stir the pot. I said, thanks for not wasting my time, and I'm not wasting yours. The, the other half say, bring it on. I said, well, you're, you're going to have to deal with it then because I, I tell you, every platform I've been on in general, there's somebody not liking the bass player, not liking a singer or some kind of BS. Go, I go, you guys, knock it off. This is the house of the Lord. You ain't playing jazz at a blues club. I did music in the world. I actually know what I'm talking about. But the highest things I could tell you, you can go online um, to KenHenry.com, and you're going to find, it's all downloadable. Everybody say, thank you, Lord, for digital stuff. Now, when they got rid of cassettes, I, Rick, I was ready to let go of cassettes, but the CDs are bothering me. They're going to get rid of CDs. That's bothering me because I'm, I'm in my 60s. I'm being honest. I go, don't take my CDs. They don't put they don't put CD players in cars anymore. Shut up! What are you people doing, man? And we didn't give you permission to do that. No, it's not right. So on the very top, all of you who are just over forty, which there's not many people in this room over forty, but th this is called this top one with the black cover is timeless worship. It's all the scripture songs from the '70s and '80s brought forward with a young band. Five years ago, churches wanted me to come. They would book a date, and then they say, now we have one other caveat. When you come, you have to do something special. I go, what is this now? They said, we want you to go back. You're leading worship in the 70s and 80s and bring one scripture song per service. When I started doing that, people wept. They came to the altar. They laid out on the floor. I stand in awe of you. How many remember that song, I stand? I worship you, almighty God. Well, this album is 10, or excuse me, it's 14 of my top songs. The second album's coming out in about a month before the second album of Timeless Worship. Right below there is an album that Matt and Ariel I, I did, I, Matt, Ariel, and I did together. Fly, the blue cover, the cloud, that is the most prophetic thing that you can download because it's only got four known songs on it. I started at Kingsley's Walker's Church in St. Charles. I went for two hours and and we just did prophetic flow. Um, Worthy of it all is a great album because if you buy three, you get them for 25 bucks. And now, now I'm doing the announcement. Carla said, I wish I would have brought product. <laughs> she can yell at me later. But this is all three of my kids lead worship. Jessica's 42, Matt's 40, Ariel's 28. They all three lead worship. I count my blessings every day. Absolutely do. I'm sure there's some man in Africa, all of his three kids lead worship. I'll, I'll meet him and they go, bro, what's up? How you doing? I mean, but I, I don't know any man or couple that all three of their kids leave worship. So it's a huge blessing. Somebody say amen to that. Okay, and this is the book, Streaming in Heaven's Flow. Uh, it's, uh, let me see, I got to get the number right. It's about 160 pages. It's, it's easy to read. Uh, and it's about streaming in Heaven's Flow on earth. And it has a study guide. Um, you can get them for $10 a piece online. And then that's Ariel's solo album. But I want you... Uh, you know, I, I don't know how you guys do offerings and all this stuff, but uh, I'll give a hand back to Kathy. But anything you can support us with, with right now, this right here that you're sitting in, it's what's coming for us by next spring. We're going to have the worship barn. They took Red Barn already. We couldn't have that name. But down in, in St. Louis County, right across the line in Franklin County, we're putting up the worship barn. It's going to look just like this. We're our streaming studios. We, we're live five days a week, by the way. Uh, yeah, you can, you, you can, yeah, you, if you want to pass or whatever. But uh, again, any, I want you to pray for us. What we really need more than money, and very rarely do you hear ministers say this, is we need you to pray for us because we have some giant doors. How many know who Sid Roth is? Okay, I went on that program. We had so many hits, it was unbelievable. But Sid Roth called us back and said, we need you to be on. They wanted me on once a day, I, I, once a week. I said, what? It's a 27 and a half minute program. Well, all the 91 days we did can go directly under Sid Roth. Their subscription base is 55 to 60,000 people, 50 to 75. So that's a giant, there's a bunch of giants. So if you pray for us, just the gateways, the proper gateways would open. I believe in St. Louis County somewhere, like with Rick's church, your church, um, we're going to start a totally, uh, I w it, not even Sunday morning, I wouldn't even uh, try to do that. 
but he's going to be hosting the presence, facilitating the presence. If you want to come out, we might go 90 minutes, we might go three hours, I don't, I don't know. But that's coming in. So would you guys wave at me if you'll pray for us just for the next couple weeks or so? I really appreciate it. And Kathy, get on up here and make the transition. Thank you, Matthew. Everybody say, hey, Matt. <laughs> come on up, Kathy. Um, it's a beautiful day. I can holler. <laughs> I'm good at hollering. I'm a mama. <laughs> so we've got quite a few different types of worship throughout the day. So th I'm going to have, um, this is Brendan Palmer. Uh, I think everybody's probably met him.